Hey, how you doing? Justin here. And today I'm going to try and help you suck less at singing, which is a little bit weird because I don't really feel like I'm much of a singer myself, but I really enjoy singing. And I feel like I've made quite a decent amount of improvement in the last few years. Any of you that have been around following my channel for some time will know that I'm responsible for some pretty atrocious vocal performances. Looking back at it now, there were some very obvious mistakes that I was making, and they're the things that I want to help you with today. I'm not a singing teacher. I have had some singing lessons over the years, and for some really super-duper singing teachers, vocal coaches. But I found with a lot of singing teachers, they're teaching you to sing, like high level to be uh, you know, aware of your breathing, supporting your diaphragm, making sure you're aware of the breaks in your voice and where it breaks and uh, singing exercises and vocal warm-ups and all of that sort of stuff. And to be honest, that's not the sort of singing that I really wanted to do. I wanted to be able to sing well enough to sing a song that I've written and sing it in tune and be able to sing a YouTube video and it not suck because some of the vocals that I did were pretty appalling and people really piled onto me. And uh, when you get loads of negative feedback on stuff, it ruins your confidence and that makes you, you know, less able to sing. So uh, what I want to share with you is not the sort of stuff that you'd get from a vocal teacher. Maybe some of it would be. But I want to go from like the very beginning, uh, people that are scared, not sure if they're in tune or not, and then talk a little bit about the things that were really important for me, like how to find a way for my, to use my voice in a way that felt good for me, to try and make the voice sound like what I wanted it to sound like without being told that I've got to sing like this and stand like this with this posture. And if you want to be a great singer, then that stuff's important. If you want to sing vocally really challenging material, then those things are pretty important. But that's not probably, I think, the right place to start. You want to start with just being able to sing in tune, being able to sing a song that you enjoy singing, and then trying to actually, you know, develop enough confidence to be able to play for someone else. If you're getting really into it and you want to take your vocals to the next level, then perhaps I think it's worth exploring some of the, you know, proper vocal coaching. So I just put a little post up on Instagram asking for questions about singing. And by far the most common thing was people worried about being able to sing in tune. So we're going to start with that one. I'm going to try and answer pretty much all of the questions that were on that and as well the, the structure that I'd kind of thought of before that I think is a good way to progress with your singing. So the first thing, singing a note in tune. How does that work? Now, I think a really good starting point is just to play a note on the guitar and then try and sing that pitch. You probably don't want to start too high. You don't want to start with this note, which would probably be difficult even for a great singer. So a good one that seems to work well for most boys and girls, but feel free to change it if you find it like range-wise difficult to sing, would be the note C to the third fret of the fifth string. Okay, so just play that note and then try and sing it. So you like your la or mm or ah, uh, or oh, or whatever whatever sound, it doesn't really matter. It's just about trying to find the pitch, right? So I'm going to stick with ah's for the time being. Uh, and we find another note, so just somewhere around the thing, go a little bit lower, a little bit higher. I'm just going to pick this, the fourth fret of the fourth string. Uh, when you first start doing this, it's likely to be a little bit more like you find the note. You know, ah, 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 ah. Might take a few goes, don't worry about it. When you're learning a new skill, it's completely normal to suck at it when you first start. Just get over it. You need to keep practicing it. The more times you do it, the more the, the quicker you'll find the right pitch. If you're really worried about finding the right pitch and you're like, I'm not sure if I'm singing the right note or not, you could try using a tuner. Now, what you do, if you want to go for the tuner option, just let me get my uh, tuner up. I'm using the, the Peterson Strobo Stomp, whatever. It doesn't really matter what, what tuner you've got. Pick a note and play the note. I'll go back to my note C. You play that note and it'll show on the little thing a note C. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a screen recording and pop it up in the video so you can see what exactly what I mean. So uh, it wouldn't really matter the tuner, by the way. But So I'm playing the note C and I can tell that it's the note C because it'll show me on the tuner, right? Then I'm going to try and sing that note. Ah. Now you can see it's kind of wobbling around a little bit. Ah. But you can get to the point where it'll stay roughly in tune and that's the key thing. Okay, so let's pick another note. It's the note G. Ah. 
staying there. Vo voices tend to have a natural vibrato to it, so that's why the, the tuner is unlikely to be locked in as much as it would for a, for a guitar. Let's try it. D sharp, and now, now I'll try and go a little bit deliberately wonky and then get to it. So, ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. We pretty much got there in the end. So the thing about doing that is that it's about developing the confidence in your ability to find a pitch. Because if you can't find a pitch at all, you're very unlikely to be able to find a pitch in the song. Now, there are some surrounding circumstances that you might find here that it's often easier to find a note like that if it's part of a chord that you're playing. So you might find that you're going to go for this note. Ah, it's a little bit high, but whatever. It'll be easier if I put it in a chord. Because the rest of the chord kind of supports finding the pitch. But I think that this finding one note, either on your own or using a tuner if you're worried that you're not finding the right pitch, is a really, really good starting point. So the next thing I want to mention is dynamics. And this was probably the biggest mistake I made when I watch myself back and I'm singing really badly it's usually because I was trying too hard and straining. Now, I've always been quite a heavy guitar player. I tended to hit the strings pretty hard. Therefore, if I was singing at the same time, I had to really sing loudly. I was really trying to project and give it, you know, sing with a lot of volume. And one of the things that I noticed when I decided that I wanted to try and work on my singing a bit was that the great singers that I really liked, that I was watching, I don't know, James Taylor or uh, Chris Cornell or whatever, Sting, they never looked like they were straining. Well, maybe occasionally when they were really going for a note, but most of the time they looked kind of relaxed, especially James Taylor. looks He doesn't even seem to open his mouth. And that was the first twinge that I got that a lot of the singing teacher stuff that I'd seen before about posture and sitting up straight and opening your mouth and la and projecting and all of this stuff. I'm not sure the guys that I really liked didn't seem to do that. That didn't seem to be part of the plan there. I'm like, well, maybe I don't have to do that. So I started experimenting with singing a lot quieter, a lot quieter, and it made so much more sense. And suddenly my voice, I could sing in tune better. I wasn't running out of breath because the other thing when you go, when you sing really loud, you use a lot more breath. And it, that's one of those instances where you need to be thinking about your breathing and your diaphragm and your posture. You need lots of air in your lungs, all of that sort of stuff. But if, you, if you're singing a little softer, you don't need as much air. And suddenly it just made so much more sense. The tone of my voice dramatically improved. Dramatic, like overnight. I went from like always sounding like I was straining and a, a bit of a struggle and never quite getting in tune to being able to hold my pitch a lot easier. And it was all just volume. Uh, one of the things that I did around that time as well is I started playing a lot more finger style. So when I'm strumming, instead of going like this, having it really loud, I started using my fingers. Okay, it didn't matter, and it meant that I could then sing a lot quieter. Okay, so really start to be aware of the, the amount of effort that you're putting into it, and don't feel like effort equates to good. And I think that's the mistake that I was making that I don't want you to make. I was always thinking this, because you'd read all of these things about singing, about, you know, you know, supporting the diaphragm, getting your lungs really full, and rah, you know, it was really, it's not. I really feel like there are circumstances where that's going to be really important. And I, again, I'm not trying to say that people who are singing teachers, vocal coaches that say that are wrong because they're not. They're absolutely right. I'm just thinking for people who are not singers that want to be able to sing better and sing in tune and get into it a bit more. It might be a better approach just to sing a lot more softly and just try to sing quietly and in tune think about it like that rather than trying to be too loud and because as soon as you go up and you're singing and it's all getting strained it just doesn't it's i mean sometimes that's necessary and it depends again a bit little bit on the style that you're doing and stuff like that but sometimes that really straining for a note is really passionate and you can learn to do that. I'm sure that there are ways of learning that stuff, but for most times, you don't. You, that's not a good place to start. I feel like sometimes now I can strain a bit and reach for stuff, but I'm coming from the more relaxed place, and therefore it works better. So, yeah, I, I, I really would think about trying to trying to sing lower, or at least being aware of it and trying to, to turn the volume down, use less less breath, and be a little bit more, um, yeah, just relaxed with it all. 
Which leads me really nicely onto my third point, which is learning to talk sing. Now, I often think of like talk singing as like kind of Mark Knopfler is a great example of that. It's not all big singy sing. It's, it's pitched, but it's, it's much more relaxed and much more like talking. And for me, when I was getting into singing, I was the, the one, an important thing I'll talk a little bit more later about is, is trying to imagine what sort of singing I wanted my voice to be like. How did I want my voice to sound? And the stuff that I really like is stuff like Tom Waits, which is croaky and a bit little, little bit rough, and, and it's kind of talky. It's not operatic. I don't want to sing like Freddie Mercury. You know, well, I mean, I'd love to be able to sing like Freddie Mercury, but that's not what I aspire to be able to sing like because it's not my personality. If that is your personality, then again, that you, you might need to be thinking more about vocal coaching, but maybe not to start off with if you're completely new to singing. Okay, there's a difference here. A, a, a trained singer, somebody who's been singing a while, will get a lot of benefit from doing that breathing exercise, diaphragm exercises, in, intervallic singing, all of that sort of stuff. But maybe if you're just starting out, it's, I'm not sure it's the right place. So talk singing is a good way of being able to get into a song and being able to get confident enough to sing because you can always rely on it. And I'm talking like, Hey, what you gonna do When you're just gonna talk Instead of thinking about getting all pitchy, you're just gonna kind of talk. You can pitch it a little bit. You can still sing if you want, but it's kind of talky and it doesn't really matter. It's not singing, but that little note was there. And you can add a bit of that in if you want, or you can just talk your way through. Find the lyrics and just sing them. You can sing a little bit if you want, but if it's too high, you can just kind of just talk a little bit. If it's just going to be really high, just talk through it and then go back to singing. You can sing as much or as little as you want. You get the idea. Now, I would love to show you like proper uh, examples of songs, but then I run into copyright problems. So that's why I'm just going to be doing a lot of this kind of explaining words as I go, not proper songs. But think about the repertoire that you want to do and what songs that you want to try talk singing and just have a go. And again, you know, again, something I want to address later on is going to be about how you interpret a song and being yourself. So just try it. Take a song that would be a really singy, singy song and try talking through it instead. See if that works. Now, uh, I'm just going to inject there that this lesson is not going to be about singing and playing at the same time. I've actually got another whole lesson on that, which I think still stands strong. Uh, I am going to remake that lesson at some point in the near future, but it's, it'll just be a remake for the quality, audio and video quality more than anything else. So uh, if you want to know more about singing and playing at the same time, then check out that video. The first stage, though, is being able to do both parts independently. You're not going to be able to sing and play at the same time if you can't do the singing or you can't do the playing on their own. You need to be confident with both parts before you try and do the two together. Okay, that's really, really important. Everyone's saying like, oh, I can't strum this super syncopated strumming pattern and sing at the same time. Yeah, you've got to automate one. That's what that lesson is about, singing and playing at the same time. Go and check that out if that's your concern. Um, but that also means if you're worried about your singing, like doing the talk sing, maybe you talk sing along with the original recording. Don't play. Just see if you can talk your way along with the song. So to talk, sing, pick out some of the pitches if you want, the rest of talk it. See if you can pick up on some of the phrasing, like the rhythm of the words. That's also very important. Okay, so learning to phrase where the, where the rhythm of the voice is. A lot of people kind of miss out on that. And learning where the rhythm of the voice is is best done singing along with the original recording or mumbling along. Okay, I still do it. When I'm learning a cover song for you guys, I learn it on guitar, I figure out what all the guitar parts are, then I get the lyrics up on the screen, I listen to the original recording and I sing along a bunch of times. I notice some of the stuff, again, I'm going to, I keep saying I'm going to come back to it later, I don't want to go off on one, but looking at the ending of the notes, how long the notes are held for, that kind of thing. I try and make a mental note of it and then i gradually learning to absorb the song. So anyway, let's continue on the, the, the proper stuff, but singing and play at the same time, get singing down first, then get the guitar playing down first, then mix them together, go and check out my other lesson on that if that's what you feel like you need. So once you can sing an individual note in pitch and you've, you've worked on your dynamic a bit and you've, you've thought about that and you've thought a little bit about the tone of your voice, the next step that I'd encourage you to do is singing scales along with playing. So obviously you need to be able to play a major scale here. 
is the one I'd recommend as a starting point, just a single octave of C major, that's the uh, third fret to fifth fret, second finger and fourth finger on the fifth string, then first finger, second finger, fourth finger on the uh, fourth string, and then first finger, third finger, little finger on the third string. Second, fourth, one, two, four, one, three, four, and back down. So play the scale first of all, make sure you've got it right, and then try singing along. So start with the first note, ah, then see if you can la, 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 or ah, or oo, or whatever syllable you like. It doesn't really matter. It's just about getting used to singing the notes in the scale. So do, re, mi, fa, so. If you want. Remember the major scale always sounds like that. Great exercise is to play up the scale, sing up the scale, play the first note, do, and then sing up the scale and then check it. So do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. But you don't have to go all of the way. You might go do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. That was a bit pitchy. Oh. <laughs> If you want to get more complicated, you can start singing the individual pitches. So going from like C to D and going la la, and then checking it, checking it. La la, la la, la la, la la, la la, la la. So you're singing different intervals there. Again, that's a great exercise. That's a little bit more singing teacher kind of exercise, but uh, just singing up and down the scale is already going to be really super helpful. Uh, but the next stage along is trying to sing those intervals if you feel like it. But I, I wouldn't be going jumping straight to doing the intervals. That was just something like uh, something to, to 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 aspire to to work on for your singing. If that's if you want to take it that bit further, or you find playing the scale straight up and down relatively easy. So now we're going to talk, this one's also a really big deal. This isn't one that I felt like I needed to do a whole lot of, but I've seen uh, students, particularly on the workshops, that have struggled with uh, singing, and I've given them this exercise. It makes a huge difference. And that is working out the melody of the song that you want to play on the guitar. Work out how to play the notes, because I feel like a lot of times people are trying to sing a song and they're not actually sure what the melody is. They're not certain. So finding the, 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 the range, finding, sorry, find, I had to turn my phone off, I got distracted. Finding the melody of the, the, that you want to play on the instrument is really important. Let's, let's do. Starting off with that. So that's, it, but it, it could be a pop song. So you, if, if you're learning a song, hopefully you know the chords first of all. So play the first chord of the song. And then find the melody. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to, 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 to you. Just stumble around it, sing it, play it, and see if you can get it so it sounds right on its own with the guitar. Just knowing how to play the melody is going to help you sing it because you, you know what it is that you're striving for. And then if you've done a little bit of practice singing along with the notes that you're playing, then you start. Happy birth, birth, birth. Happy birthday, day, day, day. Happy birthday to yeah? So just going through literally like that, it's a little bit painstaking, but you won't find that you need to do it forever. It's one of those things where a little bit of practice on this goes a long way because you start to become more aware of the pitches that you're singing against the chords because eventually you're going, happy, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. So you start to get an idea of the pitch against the chords. What does, the, what does the note sound like with, in its context? 
right? But you've got to find the melody first of all. You need to work out the melody by yourself on the guitar. That's also, in its, in, just in itself, is a great exercise for developing your musicianship, learning to find a melody on the instrument. Really good exercise. Start simple. Don't start with real complicated ones. Maybe have a go at uh, Knocking on Heaven's Door or Hallelujah by Jeff Buckley or... Um, I don't know, any, any e e relatively easy song with simple chords, okay? F songs that are got born in the USA, chords that have got just two, song, two chords, that kind of thing. Just find those simple melodies, work out how to play them on the instrument, then sing along with it, and then start putting it together with the chords and or singing along with the original recording while playing the melody, maybe, or maybe just use the melody if you feel like you're getting lost, but it's... If you're one of those people that are not sure you're singing in tune, you think you might be, but you're not really sure, finding the melody for the song on the instrument and then playing along with it, checking your pitching as you go along, really, really great exercise. So uh, hopefully you'll find that one a real, you know, a good one. Just let me scroll down my page a little bit here. Um, yeah, I just put an extra note there that it's one of the biggest mistakes that people make is not doing that and not knowing the starting note. Right? I often do it when I'm transcribing a song. If I'm even slightly unsure about the melody, I write the starting note down. Like just in tab or I'll, I'll write a C or a D or whatever the, the pitch is. Just as a, so I know which is the place to start. I was just doing a, a very easy Jennifer Lopez song of all songs. The big 90s hit thing the other day. Uh, and I've, the, the first melody note, for some reason I kept singing a harmony to the melody instead of the main melody. So I wrote down what the melody was and practiced it. And I'd just check... <laughs> Da, 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 da. Yeah, so I check where the melody was to be able to, uh, what my starting point was. Uh, really, really good idea. So, next question, breathing. Are breathing exercises important? Does it really matter how you sit with your posture and all of that sort of stuff? Yes, it does if you're going to be a big time singer and you want to sing vocally challenging material. For sure it matters. Does it matter if you're kind of doing the, the stumbly talking thing? I'm not so sure. But what I do, what I did notice is that the change in my singing, a couple of things happened at the same time. One, I noticed this, that the, the people whose voices I really liked weren't straining much, so I quietened things down. But around the same time as well, I was on a bit of a fitness hit and I was spending a lot of time on the assault bike. I was running a lot, uh, doing a lot of jujitsu and other stuff like this. So I was, I was training hard. I was working as well on meditation and a thing called box breathing, which is a particular uh, breathing exercise. So I was doing those things at the same time as it happened that my voice was seemed to be getting better. So I'm not 100% certain it was involved, but I'd be surprised if it wasn't. So I think that while breathing exercises that I'd done previously with vocal coaches didn't help me immediately on my particular vocal journey. It's not to say that it doesn't work. They're probably really good exercises. But for me, what I noticed was an improvement in my overall fitness seemed to help with my singing as well. So uh, I would definitely encourage you. I mean, I would encourage you just for the, your own happiness in life to exercise regularly, because I think it's an important thing for regulating depression and all of those things as well. There's a lot of benefits to being fit, how, how well you feel in yourself. If you're not very fit, then I would encourage you to maybe start doing some exercise, going for a little run or whatever. Uh, meditating and doing box breathing, again, really great for your mental health. Uh, maybe as much as the physical health, I'd encourage you to do it. Whether it's going to directly help with your singing, I'm not sure, but I'd be surprised if it didn't. So, um, I have never done, I've never done for more than a couple of times breathing exercises like they singing teachers would prescribe you to. I don't find that when I'm singing, I want to sit up straight with a, a straight, I just don't find it helps me. I feel more important to feel comfortable and a little bit that if I sit like that, I start doing the really loud singing and I know that doesn't work for me. It doesn't sound good for my voice. So a little bit, I just want to be like nice, nice and relaxed and comfortable. That helps me sing in a way that sounds better for my voice. So again, you need to experiment. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in a second. In fact, now. So probably the biggest change for myself, for my singing, was realizing that I wanted how I wanted my voice to sound. It was, it was going, what do I really like when I listen to singers? And I'd, I'd, I personally would rather sing like Martin Offler or Tom Waits or 
Neil Young or Neil sings. Neil Neil does a lot of pitchy singing. A lot of people don't like that when he goes really high and it gets a little bit screechy. Not screechy. I don't know how to describe that. Like when you have to strain for notes. Um, but that's not the sort of singing that I really wanted to do. I wanted it to be more relaxed. So once I took on board the style of the singing I wanted to do, I started to try and emulate the feeling of it. And this is a, a real key thing here. Singing is a direct, it's, it's in us. And I talk about it all the time when in relation to guitar is like relaxing and just being able to play from this relaxed place that you don't want all of this tension. And I feel like singing is the same. You want to be relaxed and trying to express yourself in a relaxed way, not express yourself in a strained way. Again, there are exceptions to this. If you want to play like really hardcore shouty music, then that requires a lot more energy. So it's a different thing. I'm talking about getting started with singing. I feel like it's easier to do it from a relaxed place and thinking about how do you want it to sound? I personally really like the kind of the croaky thing of Tom Waits particularly, that, that slightly raspy thing. So I spent quite a lot of time trying deliberately to get how do you want Sequel. I was just trying to sing it with a bit of grunge and trying to find how I could do this with my voice. And that sounds now a little bit silly to do it because I'm deliberately taking the mickey out of it. But that was kind of my goal when I started singing was how can I get a little bit of that effect into my voice? Not all the time. And I found that I could still do it from a relaxed place. Um, not that I feel like it's a superb vocal performance, but they, uh, you got a friend in me cover that I did recently at the beginning of the lesson. That was a really good example of me wanting a little bit of that kind of raspy sound and trying to manifest that by thinking about it. And that one's a bit more singing. That's that. I, I feel like I could only get to that place because I went through the very relaxed thing first of all, and I was able to try and sing up a little bit and hit a note and make it a little bit crunchy. So, but it was to do with imagining in my mind how I wanted my voice to sound and then trying to make it happen, trying to make the sound that I imagined in my mind. So I would encourage you to, to listen to singers that you really like and try and listen to them on a, a little bit of a deeper level, like how do you have a listen to how they phrase things. Does it sound relaxed? Does it sound strained? How are they ending the notes? Are they holding notes for very long or do they drop off? Is it a bit more talky? Is it a bit more singy? How is it stylistically? What are the things that you want to do? How do they pronounce vowels? All of this sort of stuff. Like try and examine, get as much detail about what they're doing just for your awareness when you're singing to try and bring that up. A lot of this will come down to the, the very last point uh, that I'm going to bring up. But... Uh, yeah, this imagining and, f and researching how you want your voice to sound, I feel like is a really big deal. And it was the, the biggest step on my journey because it, it came from like me looking at the people that I really loved, their vocal performances of, and try, trying to figure out like what's going on. And that was what led me to the relaxed state, seeing James Taylor sing so beautifully. But it, it just looked easy. He didn't look like he was posturing up and doing anything fancy. It didn't even look like he's singing. He kind of mumbles out of the side of his mouth half the time. But it sounds he's one of the best singers probably that ever lived for me in my, you know, in my taste. So really, yeah, that's, that's uh, important. Now, that leads on nicely to this next one, which is experimenting with your own voice to try and find what works for you. Because we are all different. Singing is very personal. So part of that journey Aside from what you aspire to, like I, I'm never going to sound like Tom Waits, that amount of croak. It's just not naturally in me. I aspire to it. I'm trying to work on uh, getting elements of that involved. But part of it was experimenting with my own voice to see what works. What does my voice, what is it capable of? So just trying yourself to experiment when you're singing a song and try singing in head voice like, Going up into falsetto, does it work for you? Does it sound really silly? For me, it always just sounds a bit odd. I only use it if I have to hit a real high note. Right, so I'm, I'm aware of it. I experimented. I experimented with this, like the whispering thing, really whispery voice, really croaky voice. I tried like, going really straight and like that. Just how, how does it work? Try experimenting with your voice to find how you can make it sound certain ways. And therefore, you can use the ones that feel natural because you'll find some of them feel natural for you and other ones don't feel natural to you. 
Okay, we're getting a bit more into the performance. Obviously, you need to be singing in tune. You need to be feel confident that you know the melody of the song. Once you can sing the song, then you want to start being aware of these, you know, how do you want it to sound? How does it feel natural for me to sound? Because you want to stay relaxed. You'll find that some of these, when you try to sing different ways, some of it's going to feel easier for you than others. So you want to grasp those ones that feel easier for you. And run with it. Emphasize that. Try and work on that a little bit more. I do feel with singing... Trying really hard to do the things that you're not good at is a very hard battle. It might be good for professional singers or session singers. For casual part-time singers, I feel like you want to find the things that work well for you and max out on practicing and working on that and accentuating that particular thing. If you find that the talky singing works great for you, just run with it. Keep working on it. Keep on, you know, pitch a little bit more or as much as you like to fit the style that you like the sound of. If you want to sing that real operatic, very singy singer style, then it's probably a little bit of a longer journey. It'll require more study. It'll require more practice, singing intervals, doing vocal warm-ups, you know, thinking more about posture, breathing, marking notes where you've got to breathe, all that stuff. I just... I did a record. I don't want to digress too much. I did a record a long time ago now, 10, 10, 15 years ago, called Small Town Eyes. I had really great producers on the record. I feel like the songs were strong, but my vocals sucked on that whole record. And I, it's because I was trying so hard to sing. I was trying to sing. I was trying too hard and it didn't work. I, ha I can't stand listening to that record anymore because I just feel like when I sing those same songs now on my own, I can do it so much better because I don't try anymore. I'm not trying to do these things. I remember doing these vocal sessions with... Uh, great producer Pete Cunner and he's like just go for it on this note and I'm really straight and I'm like I listen back to it now and go no I should have just been more relaxed if I'd relaxed more it would have come out so much better it really it's yeah experimenting and finding that place where you can be relaxed and comfortable rather than super straining I feel like is a is a really big deal number nine on my little points here, was copying singers that you like and try and absorb their styles. Now, where this comes from, the, the place that it comes from is like blues improvising. When you learn uh, certain singers, uh, certain guitar players' licks, they kind of form into your own style. By learning loads of Clapton licks, you don't necessarily sound like Eric Clapton. You're always going to sound like yourself. You're just choosing to use some of his vocabulary. So one of the things that I try to do still is when I hear particular vocal things that I really like I see about trying to absorb them into my own style so uh, I'm not going to do really complicated vocal things that Ed Sheeran might or uh, you know R&B singers or rap singers whatever I don't know rap singers that's probably not the right term singers that kind of half rap and sing like Ed Sheeran I don't know what that style's called but uh, that's not my bag, but I do listen to things like the, the way Neil Young would sing and like sing regular and then just hit one note that's a head voice is one thing that I really like is you're singing along and it's normal and then it goes hi and then back to normal again. That was a terrible example, but that's that's the idea that I would have got from that. Uh, Elliot Smith, uh, looking at the way that he finishes notes, is uh, all singers, looking at the way a singer finishes a note is a big deal. Uh, again, this is going to become even more important on my, on my final point, which I feel like ties all of this stuff together. But listening to recordings of people you like and, and, and paying attention to that minute eye so that you can then emulate it and work on those things in your own way, I think is a pretty big deal. So, uh, and aside from that, and this is this might be a bit of a, a contentious idea. When you go to open mic nights or to see other people sing, observe the things that you don't like about singers. Okay, it might not matter so much at a big concert because hopefully the vocal performance is on par. But if you go to like an open micy thing, you will find singers that you don't really rate that much that aren't gelling with you so work out what it is don't tell them don't go up to the end of the thing and go hey i didn't like your vocal performance because that's would just make you not a very nice human right but be aware of it yourself listen to them and go god that, the way they sing though that hold that note and it kind of goes out of tune toward the end it really doesn't sound very good or they're they're really lacking in confidence there so that's that's not going to work so like being confident is part of this whole thing it's a really big part of singing is, is, is your confidence. So where this all ties together, the final point, and I think this is the biggest thing that I've done over the, my career, in inverted commas, as, as somebody who's attempting to sing, is recording yourself. 
listening back to yourself sing is so, so important. It's something that a lot of you that are not feeling confident with singing, you're not going to want to do initially. So you want to be happy with your pitching and all of that sort of stuff. But if you're not sure, record yourself. What happens when you record yourself is that you watch it back and if it's good, you get a you get a little bit of a confidence that you're like, yeah, I can I can do this. This is this part sounds oh that part. Oh dear. That part needs work. But it's telling you what needs work. It's showing you, oh, I'm a bit pitchy here. I'm not singing very well in tune here. My vibrato was really terrible here. The way I held that note didn't sound very good. You know, my phrasing was bad. I wasn't in time at that section. When when it goes wrong, it, it'll show you what is wrong. And then you can go about fixing it. It's impossible to fix things if you don't know what the problems are. If you haven't realized that you've got a problem with pitch, you're never going to fix it. If you don't know that your vibrato sucks, you're never going to fix it. So recording yourself is the key for that. Now, I have to do it all the time. I'm recording myself. Most days I'm recording myself singing something and I'm, I have to listen back to it. And that was one of those things that, especially around this time where I went from trying to strain all the time to, to chilling the volume right down and getting it more in touch with that, I could hear that it got better straight away. And that helped with the confidence because when you hear it, hear it getting better all the time, your confidence grows. So all the people saying, hey, I'm not sure I'm never confident to sing in front of my family. I, I worry about singing in front of my friends or whatever. By recording yourself and developing that confidence, you'll know that, hey, I'm singing all right now. Sometimes it's a little bit fluffy, whatever, but it's generally okay. So it's really, really good for developing your confidence. Okay, so recording yourself... It really is the key thing, I think. It's, it, if there was only one thing that, that made, a di made a difference for you out of this whole video, it would be recording yourself, singing, singing and playing, or just singing, listening back to it, analyzing it, looking for what's good, looking for what needs work, then trying to work on the things that need work and using it to, get, to gather your confidence uh, from the things that are going really well. A really interesting part of this journey that you may or may not feel happy to do straight away is uploading the videos to YouTube or getting feedback, especially on the Justin Guitar community. We have a special section, audio and video of you playing, where you can upload videos of your performances and you get feedback from the community. Now, that community is really good. It's a really positive, caring, vibey community space where you're probably going to get mostly good feedback, which doesn't happen so much on YouTube. Like... I've had to develop a pretty thick skin, particularly relative to my singing, because people bag out on me. There's a lot of people that aren't afraid on the internet to really go, man, you totally suck at singing. Stick to the guitar playing, you know, you idiot. Don't, what are you doing singing in your lessons? It ruins it. And I'm like, some of it's pretty valid from my earlier videos. I think these days I'm like, I don't feel like I'm a great singer, but it's at least not awful to listen to and as a tool to help people learn to play guitar, which is why I sing there. I'm not touting myself as a singer. I feel like it's a really beneficial thing to be able to see the, the uh, a song played in the context with a vocal rather than just the guitar on its own. I feel like that's hard to see the song in it sometimes, particularly songs where they've got simple chords. Uh, it also will help you with things like song dynamics, which is something I talk about quite often. It's probably beyond here, but making sure your guitar is louder in the choruses and quieter in the verses, that kind of thing. That really helps with the performance of a song, it's something you would have already covered in grade three if you've been doing my grade three lessons. But And if you haven't, maybe you want to go and check that out as well. But the yeah, the recording, watching yourself back, getting that feedback, using it to develop your confidence, I feel like is such, such a big deal. You'd be crazy not to be doing that regular, especially now... We've all got a recording thing in our pockets, most of us, nearly all of us. Just stick your phone up, lean it up against a coffee cup, hit record and play. Then watch it back. What's good? What's bad? What's working for you? How are you going to be able to work on that? If you've got a specific problem with your singing, maybe you need to seek some additional help on working on your pitch. Maybe you go for a singing lesson if you're really struggling with that bit. But I, I, if you're not tone deaf, you can learn to sing. You've got to find a way that will sing for you. I'm not saying everyone could be able to sing like Freddie Mercury, right? That really operatic-y kind of voice. That stuff's hard, right? Really hard. I still can't. I, I, I avoid those sort of songs. I just, it scares me, right? So trying to find the way for you to be able to sing confidently whatever song you like and trying to get in touch with your voice, I think, is the key thing. Recording is the thing that's going to help you out with that the most. Now, I just did have a couple of Q&A uh, things uh, what is my voice type? Does it matter? Was a, a, a very good question that popped up on my Insta feed. I don't think it's important unless you're going like full on operatic -y, singy stuff. It's the same as like knowing the break point. Where does your voice break from regular uh, voice to head voice or whatever? It's important if you want to sing really complicated stuff, but I don't really feel like it's got a huge place in just, you know, f finding a 
finding where to to get you know where to get started with. Um, another question: hitting higher notes. How do you learn to hit higher notes? Well, again, to start off with, I don't think you should be trying to hit those higher notes. Uh, you're better off just trying to sing. Find a range that feels comfortable for you. I think that's a bigger deal. Finding a range that works for you is a great thing. Is to use a capo. Uh, we haven't talked about that. That maybe should have been part of the thing. But just learning to be able to uh, pitch a melody. Uh, it's uh, in fact, I'll, I will do this now. So it's it's about finding the the melody relative to the chord. So um, let's say that's the melody on the, the first chord C. If you put a capo on, you need to do that same thing. Find it relative. So if, you, if your first one was going da, 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 and you're like, well, that's a bit low for me to sing you low. So then you put the capo on. It's a pretty, pretty extreme example. But so it's about this, the thing that we first talked about, about finding the melody relative to that first chord, particularly, and then experimenting with a capo. Again, it comes back to experimenting. Maybe I should have talked about this in that little uh, section on experimenting, but finding the different keys for a song and experimenting with that to find which one's going to work for your voice. A, a good example for me is Elliot Smith songs. I have to sing them in the key that he does. He very often tunes all of the strings on his guitar down one tone. If I don't do that, I can't sing them. If I try to do it in regular pitch, which is only up one tone, it gets super strainy and I just can't do it, right? So that's, I, I'm well aware of my range there. It has to be down that certain point. But I don't calculate. I couldn't tell you what the keys are that work well for me or even what my break note is. I just experiment. Especially when I'm writing tunes, I just experiment with putting, you know, I'll, I'll write a riff down or a tune, I'll put a capo on and then try it again and see see how it works for me. Where, where does it feel nice for me to do it? Sometimes you want to have a bit where you strain in a song, like the climax of the chorus, everything I do, I do it for you, or some song like that where you've got this big ballad and it's like, love for you. That note wants to be, you want to strain for that note a little bit probably. So you need to find the pitch where uh, that little bit is, is where you're straining for. And you, you can do that with... Capo is the easiest way. If you want to learn to transpose, you probably have to go and do my music theory course to figure out... Uh, you can transpose without a capo, of course. It's just a lot... Too big a topic to go into for here. Um, and this, the last thing, actually, is the, the courage, uh, courage... Courage and confidence... It really is a big deal for developing the confidence to be able to sing. It's, it's, I feel like it's a big chunk of the game is being confident with your singing. If you're not confident, it comes across. You, you'll be expressing the nervousness when you sing. People don't like hearing that. So learning to relax, learning to relax requires confidence. To develop confidence, I think filming yourself and watching it back a bunch of times is definitely going to be a good thing. Getting feedback from people also really matters. And uh, I would be lying if I didn't say that the, the lot of the negative feedback I got on YouTube from my uh, singing, uh, you know, people saying that I can't sing or my vocals sucked or whatever, I should stick to guitar, those kind of comments, they kind of hurt, right? And that, that, that knocked my confidence as a singer for a long time. And if I hadn't have been a bit persistent and a bit of a stubborn bugger and, and just stuck at trying to do it and trying to improve my singing game, I probably just would have given up the singing. I very nearly did. There was a big chunk there where I stopped singing in any of my song lessons because it got to me and I was like, yeah, I can't sing. People don't like it. And then I was like, no, I'm gonna, I want to figure this out. I want to learn to sing. I want to find a way to be able to do it. And it, it, as I said, the mistakes that I made were straining too much. As soon as I stopped straining, sang softer, that was was the opening thing because as soon as I started watching myself back I'm like this is better I'm, I'm, I'm getting there now there's somewhere here then I started trying to copy the people that I really liked it got better again so the stuff I've talked about really worked for me and I'm confident it could work for you as well okay so you know I'd love to uh, I, I'm really hoping that this lesson helps develop your confidence. And uh, if you've got any further questions, I'm totally up for doing a, a, a sequel to this video. So let me know in the comments your questions for this. Uh, if you've got more questions that I haven't answered or you're still like, I don't understand how this works, let me know. Maybe I'll do a follow-up one. Uh, 
Almost certainly in the interim between the follow-up lesson, I'll put the answers in the text part of this lesson over on the website. So if you happen to be watching over on YouTube, then do go and check out the website as well. I might have answered your question there already in the like a Q&A section of, of uh, that text. Uh, this lesson is part of the grade three course. There's plenty of other lessons that are going to help you support this stuff to do with ear training and uh, looking at your dynamics and the types of songs that you should learn and all of that sort of stuff. So do go and check out, uh, if you're an advancing beginner guitar player, do go and check out grade three. There's some really good stuff in there that uh, is fairly new for me, new things that I've discovered about learning and teaching uh, that you might find super helpful. Uh, so yeah, hope this helped. Have a fantastic day. Enjoy the guitar journey and your vocal journey, and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.